Welcome, Shana and Dana, the human design team. I'm so glad to have you on here today. Thanks so much for having us. We're excited to be here and talk about all things human design. Yeah, so let's dive right in. First of all, um, how did you all meet? What was your background and how did you come up with this human design? And then we'll talk about what does that even mean? Yeah, yeah. So we met in college um, and we kind of, you know, we clicked right away. We kind of really got each other and we went down the route that you're supposed to go in life, right? We got jobs, um, we used our degrees and we felt like we're doing everything that we're supposed to do. We're meant to do right where you climb the corporate ladder and you put your head down and you really work. But around our Saturn return, which is an astrological transit that happens around 27 to 30 for every single person. Um, we both were just feeling like, what are we doing? This doesn't feel like us. I did everything I was supposed to do and I'm burnt out. I'm exhausted. I'm not in love with my life. Is this really what life is? And in that kind of place of both feeling that in our career, separate careers, we just kind of deepened our spiritual path. We went to meditation and breath work and yoga and really just trying to figure out who am I? Like, where am I going? What's my purpose? Why am I here? And that led us to finding human design. So human design is this modality that is a synthesis of other modalities. So it combines modern science with the I Ching, the Kabbalah tree of life, the Hindu Brahmin chakra system, um, and Western astrology. So it's combining all these ancient modalities with modern science into this one modality that really shows you what your energetic aura or energetic body looks like and how it operates in the world around you to experience less resistance, more abundance, more expansion, and really how you can make decisions that guide you down your life path to living your purpose and to being the energy that you're here to really be in the world. So you can kind of think of your energetic body, like a car and human design is saying, here's the manual for your car. This is the kind of gas that you use. You've been using diesel, but really you're a hybrid. And this is how you can drive or navigate life instead of being either on autopilot or just with blinders on trying to figure out where you're going. This is how you can really feel for yourself where you're headed and how you can get there. So it's incredibly specific. It's life-changingly powerful. And when we found human design, we decided, okay, you know what? I've never felt so seen in a modality before. I've never been so validated for one month. We're both just dedicating to using the strategies that it teaches. And the main two in human design are your strategy and authority, how you navigate day to day and how you make decisions. So for one month, we're going to do this and see what happens. And in that one month, everything changed. Um, honestly, our whole careers kind of birthed out of that time. And the way that we really got to just honor our energy and how right it felt in our body was undeniable. And ever since then, we've been using our designs every single day and built a business using human design, teaching human design, and um, not really necessarily knowing with our mind what we're doing, but trusting our energetic decisions are in alignment for us. And it's just proven to ourselves time and time again. So kind of a lot to unpack there, but that's what human design is. And it's, it's powerful. So Dana, I'd love to hear, um, what did you find out when you went down this path for yourself? Like what were, what were you engaging in life in a way that was not in alignment with this design? And, and yeah, yes. Tell us all. Yeah. Yeah. So basically there's five overall types in human design and that type describes your energetic aura that energetic car that shana was talking about and shana and i are both actually the same type which is a more rare and uncommon type we're both projectors whereas you lara are a generator so these five types have like a specific way that they're kind of designed to use their energy at a specific amount of energy and for me personally being a projector this means that my i'm not someone who's designed to have consistent energy um, I'm not designed to be able to work consistently an eight hour day, five days a week for years. And that's what I was doing, right? I was working this job, 
working my ass off, like commuting, um, trying so hard. And I was looking around and feeling like everyone else around me was like, it was no problem. Like they would get done with this eight hour day and then want to go hang out with the coworkers and have dinner. And I'm like, I'm going to go home and die or like sleep for the rest of the night. Like it just, I just was burning the candle on both ends so hard. And I was really judging myself. Like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I do this when everyone else can? And at the same time, I was really feeling like I was getting a lot of success and recognition in my career, but it didn't feel authentic. It was like I was good at what I was doing, but it didn't feel like the real me. And I had this feeling like all my coworkers that think I'm so good at this, like they don't even know me. They don't even know what I really like or what I'm really passionate about or what I really want to share in this conversation that I feel like I have to kind of hide this part of myself and be my true self on the weekend with my best friend, Shayna, who is, you know, doing the same thing. It was like living in the spiritual closet and then showing up and working really hard in a job that you felt like was just this huge task. Right. And I think that so many people can really identify with that story because all of us have been there, no matter what type you're in, we've experienced that feeling like you're living in a life that's inauthentic to you, but feeling like you're trying to make it work. And underneath that is this just like voice in the back of your head. That's like, this isn't it. And this isn't you. And that voice can be really scary to listen to because once we let that in, like, okay, this isn't it. And I'm not really being me. Then it opens up a greater question of like, okay, then what is it? And who, who am I? And those questions can feel really daunting, I think, especially when we're in our 20s. And um, so that was the process that that brought us down the road of discovering human design was asking those questions. If this isn't it, what is? If this is not who I am, who am I? And, um, you know, quickly discovering in human design who you really are is so powerful because, you know, psychologists have this long posing question of who are we? Are we our nature or our nurture? And that's kind of at the core of human design. Your design is your nature. This is who you really are, who you're meant to be, who your soul chose to be in this lifetime. And then we have our nature, our conditioning, our programming, who we're taught we should be. And I was really living off of that nurture. Like I was taught that if you want to be successful, which I did, you show up, you work hard. If you have that voice in the back of your head, you quiet it and, you know, I was really living in that place of inauthenticity without even fully realizing it. So that was my journey. The big thing was starting to let myself, who I really am, what I'm really interested in, show up in all aspects of my life and not just with my personal friends or on the weekend. And also learning that it's not sustainable for me to be overworking and pushing myself and convincing myself that, you know, I can do it. When really now I know that's just not how I'm designed, period. So it was super liberating for me. Wow. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. The first thing I would like to ask in terms of these, they almost sounds like sound like archetypes in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, does one, how, how does one know the archetype that they, um, besides like feeling it, like you obviously felt you mm -hmm. weren't being consistent with what you feel felt emotionally, spiritually, and, um, but otherwise, how does one know like what archetype they are and how amazing would it be for people to know this really young in life? Um, and does any of that change or is it like, again, a mostly wired in uh, that nature component? Yeah, these are great questions. So um, your human design, human design is, you know, a newer modality that was created by a man named Ra Ruhu in 1987, but it's using these other modalities like Western astrology. So we like to call human design, the new astrology. And what it really is, is, you know, you're plugging in your birthday and time information into an online database and generating your human design chart. And that chart will tell you which of these types you are, right? Which aura you have. And it also gets into incredibly specific detail of what your gifts are, what your life purpose is, um, even things like what your ideal diet and environment, we won't get into any of that. But the main most important thing that is the greatest takeaway from human design is knowing which one of those five types you are. Because this is like the key, like the life hack to knowing 
it, without knowing anything else, now you know how to operate your aura correctly and everything else falls into place. So with, you know, if you're listening along, you're like, okay, I want to know what type I am so I can listen along with this, go online and generate your chart. And you'll see a chart that has a body with all of these shapes and numbers. And that can look really confusing, but you don't need to know any of that. Just look for the written categories. And on those written categories, you'll see type, and next to that, it'll either say manifester, generator, manifesting generator, projector, or reflector. So those are the five different aura types or energy types. And um, with those five types, you know, we could talk about these forever, but I'll just kind of do a quick rundown of what they mean. Um, so first type I want to talk about is manifestors. Manifestors are one of the more rare, less than 10% of the population have this manifesting energy or this manifestor aura. And manifestors have a powerful, impactful aura. These are people who are here to initiate. They are here to be fire starters. They are here to be a catalyst of change in this world. They're here to innovate and trailblaze and break the mold and do whatever the hell they want to in this lifetime. And their conditioning, right? Society teaches them that that's not okay that they need to tone it down, that they need to just like get over that and get put in their the box. Head down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do what everyone else is doing. And that is literally detrimental for a manifestor's well-being. Like they will see their physical health being impacted by not getting to have this freedom and independence that they're designed to have. So for manifestors, you know, you're really designed to be this fire starter and to have that innovation and trailblazing kind of qualities, but there can be a lot of resistance because you, your energy is so powerful and your energy is designed as a manifester to have this kind of like blockage in your aura, this closed aura where people can't really quite read you. They, and so you feel unpredictable and a bit scary. So naturally your energy is kind of invoking people to want to control you. And the way that you can combat that is by practicing the strategy of informing. So just opening up this closed aura and keeping people in the loop about how you really feel, what you're really wanting to do. And literally just by telling people what's going on internally, you've eliminated resistance and you're creating en more energetic ease for people to accept you and understand you and even want to help you in the things that you're creating. So that's manifestors. And then we move on to generators, which are the most common energy type. And that's what you are, Lara. Generators are about 37% of the population. And we absolutely love being around generators. I was wondering if you were a generator before we even looked up your chart, because you can feel the aura of a generator feels open and welcoming and warm and inspiring and nurturing and generators are really the people who create and generate this consistent life force energy to work on things and to build things. However, that energy is only accessible to them if they are using it, doing things that they truly love. If a generator is working on something that they don't love and that they're not into, that energy source completely drains out. Their battery gets completely drained and it's not sustainable for them over time. So the big conditioning, if you're a generator, is like you do have the energy to work this nine to five. So get in there and put your head down and do it. And you can make it last a lot longer than projectors could or manifestors could, but you will eventually also feel that complete lack of joy for life, that complete burnout. Because the truth is, the only way that you have sustainable access to this life force energy is when you are creating and doing what you love and following your dreams. And as a generator, you generate more life force energy when you are truly doing what you love and what lights you up, that energy spills out of you and feeds the people around you. Like you are literally the keeper of life force creative energy as a generator. And we all need you to be doing what you love because that's how we get charged up by you. And that's really like your highest purpose is making sure that you're following your true dreams, your true um, excite, exciting things that really excite you. And the way that you find what you love as a generator is by listening to your body, not your mind. So your mind is very connected to that conditioning, to that societal programming about what you should do and what you should like and what it sh you should do to make money or support your family, et cetera. Your body though, is actually the place that has the wisdom and the knowing about what is aligned for you to use your energy on. So for generators, your strategy is called waiting to respond. 
And what that means is that instead of looking for like, okay, what do I love? What lights me up? Like, how can I find it? How can I look what other people are doing and try to copy them? Instead of doing that, generators are designed to really focus on being present and to release future tripping, which can be really challenging for them to do. It's like, okay, be present, live in this moment and listen to your body's response to things. Does your body actually want to get on this call right now and have this conversation? Or is your body not into it? You don't have energy towards it. Your body's not wrong. Your body is actually the sacred guiding compass that's telling you if you have energy for it and you're excited by it, this thing is right for you and aligned for you. If you're exhausted by this thing or you just feel blah about it, this thing is not aligned for you. So for generators, it's really about trusting that they have this sacred compass of their body that's constantly telling them, okay, I, I want this, I'm into it, I'm excited by it, this is right for me or not. And that can take a huge act of bravery and courage to trust that and to follow that because Let's say your body gets super excited by starting your own yoga, you know, company and your mind is like, oh my gosh, how can I actually make that work? And will it all work out? And will I have enough money to do it? And what are the people around me going to think? And your mind has all of these doubts and questions because it's really kind of focusing on the societal expectations and pressure and conditioning of what you should do. But your body knows already your purpose as a generator. And the more you can listen to that, the more you're effortlessly guided towards what you're meant to do. So, um, that sounds manifesting- about right for me, for yeah. sure. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'd like every part of that is, uh, I definitely tune in to things that spark me versus things that don't. And I think that, um, and I always try and teach from that, but it sounds like even, I'm teaching it because it's intuitive to me, but it might not necessarily mm-hmm. be intuitive to everyone else. Yeah. Right. And you are here to teach that presence and that spark. I love mm-hmm. that, um, that word that you use because it is like being turned on, right? Like mm-hmm. turned on inside your body of like, I want this, or I don't want this, or I'm lit up or I'm not lit up. And it is about presence, right? Because in this moment, it feels like I'm dr- drudging through the mud to do this thing. But tomorrow, actually, I'm turned on by, I want to answer this email. I want to get on here and work on my website. But today, calling this friend feels like dragging my energy to do it. So it's checking in in this moment. Am I, do I have that spark to engage or not? And can I honor it? Because your body as a generator and a manifesting generator, which is the next type that Dana's going to talk about, um, your body is guiding you to divine timing, to being in the right place at the right time. And in ways that your mind could never try to do for you, your mind wants to like, should I be here at this time connecting with this person? Cause it's a good opportunity and da, 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 da. But your body is saying, I want to go. I don't want to make coffee this morning at home. I want to go to a coffee shop. And when you're there, you bump into the perfect person or you overhear a conversation that you're like, that is exactly how I need to be thinking about this thing or creating this thing. So your body's always trying to guide you like a magnet to where you are meant to be in that moment. And it's just about listening to your body more than your mind. Your mind for any of the types is here to observe. It's here to um, inspire. It's here to ask questions and process data and create things, but it's not here to make your decisions about how you are using your energy in this moment and how you are making big life decisions. Um, So it gets really specific from there. So I'll leave it at that for now because I want to get into the rest of the types. Yeah. Um, We'll just add one more thing. I think it's so funny because for me, I think I've been living like this for a long time. I was fortunate, maybe by default, maybe by magic intervention, to really decide to do to go on my own path. And I definitely had some fear and trepidation. And honestly, my husband was the biggest kind of he he nudged me. And so I don't. It's interesting. I don't know if I hadn't had him doing that, if I would have you know gotten to this place as quickly as I did. But when you said about being present, I am so present when people ask me are you excited about that trip you're doing next week? I I'm not even like thinking about that trip next week. Or if somebody's like, we need to look at the next six months. And I'm just, I start to like go like, I start to contract. (laughs) I, it's very challenging for me and it doesn't work well because you, for being productive and I have a team and to, to make, you know, like any kind of uh, strategic plans, you have to look ahead, but that is my biggest problem is I'm so in the here and now it is a struggle. And I feel my energy just go, whoa, 
when I have to start thinking or talking about things in the future. So it has been, yeah. that was interesting you said that because I'm like, that is so many people are like, Laura, I know you don't want to talk about this, but we need to, you know, we need to do the workshop schedule for the fall. And I just start to like shrivel up thinking like, I just, it's, it's, I yeah. want to do those workshops. I want to put them on the calendar. I just don't want to think about them. <laughs> like yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think about the future in that way. Like I'm just in it now. And um, so, yeah, there's, there's it, a struggle with all of it, but it's actually just reaffirms that uh, that's because I'm very, very integrated and present. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, there's a way to plan from a place of presence. And that looks like, you know, sitting in front of your computer and dropping into your body and feeling like, do I have energy right now to plan this? And if not, I'm going to hold the intention like, okay, I do want to plan this, let's say by the end of the week. And checking in, you know, throughout the day, like, do I have energy right now to plan? So you can plan about the future. You can talk about the future, but it's so important that you're listening to your body first and checking in with, okay, does this feel good for me to plan right now? Or does it feel like I'm forcing myself to, because I should and letting that guide you, but you do have a lot of specific energy in your chart, um, around, you know, liking consistency and, and liking to have, you know, your specific ways of doing things, um, and around wanting to be more focused in on the details and like seeing things that other people might miss being really present in that, like more zoomed in phase and having to zoom out can feel like a lack of motivation. Cause it's like, you know, if you were to write a book, for example, this is a good example, y- you, starting from like, what's the overall vibe of the book? It can feel like, uh, I don't even know. I don't, not very motivated to focus on I'm it. laughing. Cause I'm, I have an outline for a book and everybody's on my team is like, when are you going to write the book? And I'm like, <laughs> oh my I will God. Feel- <laughs> I'm just laughing at your example. It's so good. Yeah. So I've had it in my like computer for two years and people are always like, write your book, write your book. I have all the stuff. I just, yeah. Yeah. The best way to be feel motivated for that is to then say, let me do an outline first mm-hmm. and point a, what, what is point a point B point C, like move your way through the outline. The more you're zoomed in on details, then you can zoom out and say like, okay, I focus on all these details. And now when I zoom out, what is this? Like, what did it become? And then it's going to become clear what the overall vision is for that book by starting with the details first, which we're conditioned to do the opposite. Right. And that does work for other people, but for you and me, actually, it is more about, let me get uh, into like is. the nitty gritty right. first. Like actually I have the outline. It is the thing that's brought me peace. Yeah. I actually mm. now know, like I'm going to do this because I have mm. it in this form. And the next phase is like, I just want to create the energetic and, you know, logistical space for it. So little, maybe taking myself out of my environment somewhere else where I'm, I don't have meetings and this and that. And I can just really, because when I get zoomed in, I am like super productive. Like I I can, I I do, you know, I've developed a teacher training manual. Like I, I can do it. And I know that, but it really, I, I could also very be, I can be distracted. And that's my, that's the hint to me that it's not the right time. It's like, if I'm like, oh, I got to do this. So I got to do that. You know, it's like, mm, if I can't sit with it and just dive deep because I know I have that capability then. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. talk about that space. But I'm curious. So I'm wondering, because I have so many people in my life, I attract the people, like I'm a Scorpio. I attract Virgo, like people that are organized. They mm. love organization or Capricorn. Like I tr- attract those people and I, I feel like that I need them like, because yeah. they're so into the, the <laughs> scheduler and all that. So is there a, is there a type, uh, in the engineering that, that like loves that type of like detail schedule thing? Yeah. I don't so, like, <laughs> so any of the energy types can like that detailed scheduled side actually gets that's shown in the deeper layers of your chart. So it kind of starts, human design starts broad and then it gets more and more and more specific. So, um, you know, the broadest is your energy type and then it gets into how you make decisions. There's eight different 
decision-making authorities. And then it gets into your profile, which is your personality archetype. Um, and there's 12 different profiles and then it gets into, um, your gifts, right? So like your inherent qualities that come naturally to you. And this is where we can really see, like for you, you have gate nine. It's a big energy in your chart, which is all about, um, zooming into the details and seeing things other people might miss. And you actually really value that in other people. Um, and then we can see how your energy is flowing. Is it more specific? Is it more general for you? It's more specific. So once again, having people that can support you in a more specific way is really supportive for you. But the most powerful thing with human design is knowing how you're different, like okay, this is what's natural for me. And when I can see that and love that and accept myself, it becomes so much easier to accept the differences of other people. And you drop the judgment in comparison because we judge ourselves and compare ourselves so much more than we even realize. You know, for example, in a partnership, you can say, I've been working on this, this all the time. And you've been working on that all the time. Like, let's switch. Like you should be helping me over here and I should be helping you over there. But really like, where you've been working is your zone of genius. Like that's what you're really good at and vice versa. Like there's no need to switch lanes. Also on social media, you know, this person's building a business in this way and they're posting this often and they're whatever. And that might be really in alignment for them and it really works for them. But for you, it doesn't. And when you have understanding and awareness of that, it's just so easy to be like, wow, they're living their design. Like, that's great. Let me focus on living my design and you'll it. have so much more abundance and expansion and actually reach your goals versus trying to swim upstream to be like everyone else. Um, it's not aligned for you necessarily. I love that. Okay. So let's keep going. Cause I know there's people that will want to know what the other three are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great that we paused on generators because so many people listening are going to be generators. Um, and the next type we're going to talk about is manifesting generators, which are kind of a hybrid of generators. So for this next type manifesting generator, you're a hybrid of a generator and a manifester. The first two types that we talked about um, are coming together to kind of make this third type. So manifesting generators are in the end still like a generator. They're here to listen to their body, not their mind, about how they want to use their surplus of creative energy each day. And as a manifesting generator, you are like an energizer bunny. Like you have so much energy and you are here to use it every single day. And if you're not using up all of that energy, that can be really detrimental to your well-being. So if you were, you know, someone who is a stay-at-home mom and you don't have time to exercise or play or use up that energy for some, you know, for some reason, I guess that's probably a bad example because stay-at-home moms are probably constantly using their energy. But um, as a manifesting generator, the big difference between you and a generator is that as a manifesting generator, you are designed to have lots of different interests. You're designed to kind of switch gears really quickly. Um, you're designed to get bored really easily with things. So we meet a lot of manifesting generators. We call them man gens for short that have two careers or even three careers, or in the course of their life, they've changed careers 10 times. And that's really right for them, right? Because they are a jack of all trades. They come in, they learn something quick. They're efficient. They master it. They're ready to move on. And our societal conditioning can tell us that that is flaky, that that's never going to lead to success, that you have to be dedicated to something and do it for years and years and years to find success. And that is just not true for manifesting generators. And if they're trying to hold themselves to that standard, they're going to feel really out of alignment and really burnt out. And they're also going to dwindle this incredible life force energy that they're meant to have a surplus of and share with other people. So just like a generator, their strategy of moving through the world is listening to their body, not their mind about how to use their energy, but also informing people along the way. Because man gens, just like manifestors, have this initiating, impactful, inspiring, trailblazer, innovator, like they're always kind of finding new ways to do things. And the more that they let people in on what they're wanting to do next, the easier it is for people to understand that and allow that and accept that instead of giving them resistance. Mm -hmm. um, and then we move on to projectors, which is the type that Shana and I both are. And this is one of the big things that really clicked for us with human design is like the fact that we're both projectors and made everything make sense of why we always felt so connected, why we kind of shared a different perspective than maybe the friends around us or the other people around us. And projectors are one of the more rare types. They're less than 20% of the population. And projectors are people who are here to guide 
They are have a special aura that really allows them to see into the other. So they're really able to see who people really are on an authentic level. And they're able to give excellent advice and guidance to help people become a better version of their true self and a more efficient version, version of themselves. Um, the way that they're able to see into people really clearly, they're also able to see into systems and businesses, and they're really able to make corrections and tweaks and efficiency gains. Um, and so projectors, they do not create this consistent amount of energy to work on things they love. Even if a projector is in love with their business, they only have like, you know, this finite amount of energy that doesn't come back and recharge every night. So for a generator, you have this energy, you use it up, you fall into bed exhausted, you wake up the next morning, batteries fully recharged, and you're ready to rock and roll if you're in alignment. Whereas a projector, you could love what you're doing, you use up all your energy, you fall asleep at night, and then you're like done for like a week and you're still trying to play catch up. So it's really a different way of being. And projectors are only designed to work hard output for two to four hours a day. And the rest of the time, they can still be working, but not in a way that feels like expending energy that they don't have. Instead, it can be in a more cerebral, creative, like brainstorming or researching or honing their skills or connecting with people or assessing something. So for projectors, it's crucial to actually check in and feel what are the things that I need to do each day feel like they're expending energy? Because you'll, you'll know. Um, and then what are the things that feel like they're enlivening your mind and enriching your mind, but not expending energy in that same way? And it's about starting to kind of shift those scales. And for other people, when they hear projectors are only here to work two to four hours a day, they say like, oh, must be nice. I wish I only had to work two to four hours a day. But when projectors hear that they're only here to work that much, they say, how is that even possible? Like, how am I going to find success and make my life work if I'm only working in that way? Because our conditioning teaches us that we need to really show up and put in the hours in order to be valuable, in order to be successful, in order to be of worth in this society. And for projectors, it's really about working smarter, not harder, because projectors are incredibly efficient. And it's also about seeing that their greatest value is in what they see, is in their insight, not in what they're able to do or how much energy or time they're able to share. So these internal switches, you know, switching your perspective, reframing your perspective about what your value really is and allowing that to be okay, that's actually the hardest hurdle. So we all feel like this pressure, um, you know, that it's not okay to be who we are, but really the biggest person you need to convince is yourself. And once you have this internal confidence, you're able to face people who are giving you this pressure or these expectations. And you have this confidence to say like, no, that's not right for me. And this is, and once you can show up and say that other people are like, oh, okay, great. You know, it's like people are pressuring you from their point of conditioning. Um, but once you really know yourself, it's almost like you have this, like this whole new level of empowerment where it doesn't affect you as much. So for projectors, they're here to guide people. They're excellent at giving advice. However, if they give advice to someone in an unsolicited way, that advice is going to fall on deaf ears and it's going to feel extreme, extremely repelling. So a lot of projectors, they feel from a really young age that they're wanting to give everyone advice and they're wanting to guide people. But if they give that advice before someone's ready, when someone did not ask for it, when someone does not want it, that advice feels repelling and the projector can feel a lot of bitterness, right? And so for projectors, the strategy that they can apply to their life is waiting for the invitation before they share that advice, before they share their gifts or their services to other people. And when projectors do that and they let people come to them when they're ready, that's when their whole energy really shifts and they can create this enormous amount of success in their life, working less, but really sharing their super unique insight. So for anyone listening that's a projector, you know, really the two big things are working less and then also just waiting, focusing on yourself, um, honing your own abilities, getting really clear on what your unique zone of genius is, knowing who you are and not worrying so much about what other people are doing or needing them to hear your advice. That's going to be the most attractive and magnetic thing where then people actually do want whatever it is that you have to offer. Well, I have a question for the two of you personally, since yeah. you're both projectors mm -hmm. and you're both offering this service, which is now a vocation, which mm -hmm. I'm sure provides you financial solvency. And yet you have to wait for people 
in theory, to find out about you or something. Like, how do you how do you merge those two? Um, the the internal kind of energetic mapping that you have with the reality that you want to get this out into the world and you want people to know about it. And yeah. it's a business for you. <laughs> yeah. So we have this analogy um, of thinking for projectors of thinking like the other types, like they're boats out on the water and projectors are here to be lighthouses. They're really taught that you have to be out on the water, seeing what's directly in front of you and working on that and going where you're going. But really when you focus on yourself and you build yourself up, who am I? What am I good at? What, what do I see? What are my insights? What's fascinating to me? What's interesting? Um, and then you shine your light, which looks like having a website, having social media, talking about it with friends and family, letting people really see you focused on this thing, not saying I it's just an learned human design, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. the difference would be for Dana and I, for example, with human design saying, oh my gosh, let me look up your chart. I have to know what you are and this is who you are and this is what you should do and blah, 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 right? That can feel repelling. Whereas if I say, oh my gosh, I just learned about human design. It's changed my life in this way. It's really powerful. I'm in love with it. Somebody can say like, oh, what is human design? Well, can you look at my chart? Like, I really want to know, right? So it's a shift. And with our business, for example, having a business um, and any of the types can be business owners. Um, any of the types can work in a nine to five really doesn't matter. It's listening to your own body, right. And shifting your energy in a way that works for you. Um, shining your light really looks like for us having a platform where we don't need an invitation. So our podcast, for example, we can talk about all the many things. And if you want to listen great, but you can also hit pause and stop listening. Um, same thing with, you can come to our website and really see and recognize us, see what we have to offer, connect with our teachings and then decide for yourself if you want to go further. And that's true for any projector listening. You know, if you are working in a nine to five and you're seeing these efficiency gains that people can make, or you're looking at a project and seeing how it could be tweaked, right? That insight, you noting that like, oh, I'm really good at noticing this and this and this. And talking to your coworkers, like I'm loving getting to observe this and this and this within this project those invitations are going to come. Your boss is going to say like, well, can you look at this project? And what do you see here? And then suddenly you're being recognized as somebody who has insight. And now maybe you're the manager, maybe you're moving up in that world a lot faster than if you just put your head down and did what you were told and didn't share what you're passionate about at that time without shoving food into to a closed mouth, like Dana was saying. Um, and, so does that kind of make sense? Yes, absolutely. I, I love that. And I think when you're doing it Again, when you're in alignment, it's never going to feel forced anyway, and it's mm -hmm. never going to feel like I'm just offering that information, and if you don't accept it, I'll get hurt by it. It's just because you're sharing it with your your entire being, your heart, your soul, and your and and if somebody, you know, this is what I say about my my practice is, if somebody doesn't like it, I'm not offended by that because I know how much when people are ready for it, how much they love it. And so I mm -hmm. think when you're just solid with your own internal compass, you can put those, the, the, the light yeah. out and, and, you know, whoever is meant to find it will. And absolutely. Yeah. And I want to say that, you know, any of the types are designed to guide too. They're designed to share their insight. They're designed to create and manifest and initiate, right? Um, but it's just talking about how your energetic aura works and the strategies that you can use to optimize your aura versus that feeling of swimming upstream or dredging through the mud. Um, and I do also want to say that when you hear like, this is a more common type, or this is a more rare type, it can feel like, well, this is a more special type and this is not. And that's not true at all. I mean, Oprah is a generator and holy shit, how special is she? Right. Um, and how impactful and inspiring she's been to the world. Um, it's just knowing, okay, I'm a generator this is how my energy operates. Let me be present. Let me listen to my body. And that's going to get me to whatever it is that I'm wanting or any of the desires that you have, you have them because they're meant for you. That's an energetic frequency that is aligned with your energy. That's why you're attracted to it. So, um, owning that learning how your energy optimizes, you're going to get there. It's not about being like special or not, because there's like, you know, 
uh, Beyonce is a man gen, right? She has so many things going on. She's so inspiring and impactful and such a badass. Um, so it's really fun to kind of see the really inspiring people for the types and then just knowing, okay, for me, I'm this type, this is how I can optimize my energy and go from there. Mm. I and I also just wanted to share like an example, right? Since we're talking about these different types and strategies, like let's say for example, a generator wanted to teach a yoga class and a projector wanted to teach a yoga class. So a generator, if they go into that yoga class and they see the teacher teaching and everything in their body is like so excited, like, oh my God, I want to do that. Then that is a correct response. They know that doing this thing is in alignment for them. So after the class is over, they can walk right up to the teacher and say, I want to teach a class here. I'm super into it. And that's really aligned for them to do that. Whereas a projector, if they go to that class and they're like, oh, I'm really fascinated in this. I want to teach this class. If they walk right up to that teacher without that teacher knowing them or recognizing them first and say, I want to teach a class here, it's going to come off as repelling. So instead, what the projector needs to do is take this intel of like, oh, I'm really fascinated in that. Let me take that home with me. Let me build that up in my own life. Let me start creating my own yoga videos and sharing it on Instagram or whatever it is, or, you know, um, creating my own classes that are out in the park. And then that yoga teacher comes to my class and says, I love how you do this. Will you come teach at my studio? So Mm. it's a very different way of entering into new things in your life. But in the end, the generator and the projector can both be teaching a yoga class, but that strategy is going to show them the most aligned and authentic way for them to genuinely move into this new thing that they're wanting to do. Oh, I love that example because I do think, again, when, you know, I've had teachers who have gone through my training and write me and they're like, I'm doing all the things I'm posting on Instagram and I'm, blah, 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 but I'm not getting anybody and I'm, and I'm like, well, that should tell you something, right? Like you're doing yeah. it as you have, you're seeing being done, but you have to find your own voice and your own way and, and believe in it and not have, it's hard not to have an expectation, but it's like so many things in life. If you really believe strongly in something, what I think, and this might be my type, is if I put it out there, I am not attached to whether or not somebody is going to come and love it or not like it or, you know, sign up. I I just am so passionate about it myself and I know that it will attract mm-hmm. the people. So I think that sometimes people think there is like a do A, you get B. And it's like, right. I think if you're more in alignment and this, some of these women who've written me, maybe they are more the types that you know, need, there are the projectors, they need to approach Mm -hmm. it differently and not just be like, here's what I have, sign up, (laughs) you know? Yeah. I love that wisdom. So beautiful. And it's true. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, instead, what a projector would say is this is what I'm so lit up by with this, this new practice that I'm offering. And like, I've observed this in the body. And when I worked with this student, it really just opened my eyes to A, B, C, and D. And people will, people are attracted to that authenticity. They're attracted to um, seeing the world through your lens. And then they're like, wow, this person has a lot of insight, even though they just shared it in this one reel, I need to sign up for their class. Mm-hmm. So it's like that, that shift, right? Mm-hmm. And that key word authenticity, like this is really what human design is teaching you. What is authentic for you? How do you know what that is? How do you f- navigate it? How do you find it and recreate it as life twists and turns and authenticity is the most delicious, like magnetic, juicy, like you just can't fake it. You can't. And humans are a lie detector for authenticity without even knowing it. We have psychic radar for when someone is authentic and they are doing it in a way that is real for them. They feel it. It's true. Like that energy is just undeniable, right? It's unmistakable. And we can also feel the opposite when someone is doing something, but they're running on the hamster wheel and they're swimming upstream and you see that they're trying really hard and you do like them, but it just, something feels off. It Mm. is less magnetic. And the whole thing about authenticity is like, you can't fake it, right? You can't trick someone else. Um, but we often try to trick ourselves that we're being authentic because we're afraid to really feel like what do we're afraid to do it in our own way. We're afraid to take big risks. We're afraid to take the trust fall into our intuition, guiding us into our body, guiding us. But the more that we can do that and get real with ourselves about 
is this actually authentic for me? Or am I kind of trying here? It's not about being perfect, right? I don't want to preach that message, but it is about always being your own authority, like really trusting yourself first and knowing that you're the only person that can choose something that's authentic for, for you versus not. And that's going to be the most successful thing. So Shane and I both being projectors, you know, there have been so many times, countless times in the way that we've built our business where people have told us, you can't do that. That's not going to work. Like you have to have sessions on the weekend because that's when people don't have work. And it's like, well, we don't want to, uh, and we're not going to do it. And people are like, no, you don't understand. You have to. And we're like, no, you don't understand. That's not our truth. Like that's just not authentic for us. And it's been confronting at certain times to honor your truth in the face of other people telling you it's not possible. But then when you do that and you stick to your truth and you are authentic, it pays off mm. because people are going to be so much more attracted to whatever it is you created with that authenticity. So it's worth it for people to be asking those deep questions and to be really getting real with themselves. And yes, you know, I agree. I always okay say if you're it, ruffling no. feathers, that's you're probably doing something right. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're going to like, if you're true to yourself yeah. and you know, whether or that rubs somebody the wrong way, because they kind of intuitively wish they could be themselves or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you never know. You don't, your, your job is not to evaluate someone's response. Right. But um, sticking to who you, you know, like how you guys said, I'm not going to work on the weekend. I mean, yeah, you're, yeah, you're going to ruffle feathers. But hey, isn't it amazing that you took that stance because you knew that was true for you? Yeah. And being able to feel what's true for you, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot mm -hmm. of times the fear comes from if I don't put myself, if I don't reach out to other people and make things happen, what if nothing ever comes my way? Yeah. Or if I wait to respond, what if nothing happens? Um, what if there's nothing to respond to? Um, so there's that fear of like, if, if this isn't authentic for me, what if nothing is, or what if I don't find something that is, um, and it's really through understanding, okay, this is who you are. This is how your energy operates. This is how you can feel when something is authentic for you or not energetically within your body. It's a really real feeling. Um, this for you as an individual is how it's going to feel see if that works, see how it feels for you. Um, through that process, then you can start to really, it fast tracks everything, right? Okay. Let me set down this way. I've been trying to do it because other people have, and let me tune into this moment. What is that feeling telling me right now? That it's like stepping stones, right? And then you'll, you'll look back in a month even and be like, wow, oh my gosh, at the beginning of this month, I had so much fear and anxiety and I didn't know where I was going. And now at the end of this month, I have really clear understanding of what I want to create. That's radically authentic for me. Um, and that's abundant, successful, magnetic, juicy. Everybody wants authenticity. Um, and I love that. I love how you guys have described that as juicy things. and it is it's absolutely magnetic. Like we are attracted yeah. to people. We want to be around that energy because it's, it's so clean. It's so clean, yeah, you know, so, it's pure. Like, so yeah. pure. And it's so, there's a lot of messiness in the world where we're not sure there's a lot of shadows. And then to have that clarity and cleanness, it, it's so attractive and we want to be mm. in it. We want to be in that vibe. Um, oh, let beautiful. me before, yeah, before you finish with the fifth one, yeah. I am sure that you, um, I'm in love with you girls, by the way. <laughs> um, every time you say a sentence, I'm like, Ooh, write that down. That uh, was like, Oh, uh, move my soul. I love it. Thank you. Um, I, w I wanted to ask, I'm sure you do this in your offering, but for people that are listening and they're like, this all sounds great. I'll find out, you know, this energetic, um, you know, what is my engine engineering and en energetically one of these five, but then like, well, how do I know? So do you go in, I'm sure you go into the deep dive of how to tune in, whether mm -hmm. that's through a movement experience or front of breath or like journaling. I, I imagine that you go into like the logistical, like how to then honor your energetic yeah. self. Right. Yeah. That is actually our favorite way to teach human design because, um, it can be a very cerebral science. Like other people are just talking about the ideas, but it's like, 
okay, how do I actually do that then and put that into action and embody it? So that is our favorite way to actually talk about human design is through rituals and routines and kind of the felt experience and tips that you can actually try. So like we have our ritual kits, which is a box that is personalized. It comes with a printed booklet that has your chart and it describes all the foundational things of how to actually apply it because sometimes it can feel like so much you're not up for the journey of self-study. You just want it handed to you. So we have that ritual box and then it comes with essential oils and crystals and other meditation tools that have a specific ritual. Here's what this tool is and here's how you can use it to actually integrate your design into your lived experience. So we created that because we felt so passionately about people being able to actually embody easily these different things and make it a fun, beautiful experience instead of it feeling like work. So mm. we have that on our website that people can check out, but also all of the content we share, we have video courses and we do live readings. Um, we also train other people who are wanting to become human design readers. All of the content that we share, we're always wanting to share like practical tips of ways that you can actually check into it and feel it. Cause that is so important to us. Yeah. So for example, um, for you, your authority is sacral authority and you have a really defined spleen as well. So this is getting specific, but what it tells us is that when you're making decisions, it's all about this hell yes, like gut feeling. It just feels right. I just want it. I'm laughing or not. That is like my, that everybody in my team will laugh when they hear that. Cause that's my metaphor is if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is your truth. That is your truth. Yeah. And for me, it's not for yeah. me. I have to talk it out to even hear what I want to do. Mm. Um, and for Dana, she needs to give herself 24 hours up to a week to get emotionally neutral and then feel, does this make me happy when she mm. pictures it? So it's so different, right? We're all three of us are so different in how we make decisions. And we're, we hear, I have a lot of messaging. That's like, just trust your gut. And it's like, well, for me, and I've always felt this my whole life. Like, do I have a gut? Like, I feel <laughs> like sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't, and it's not consistent. And that's because my sacral center is undefined and I amplify other people's gut. So when I'm around this person, I can be like, oh, I have a strong gut feeling. But then when I get home, it's like, I don't have anything. And sometimes it's not even right for my own life. It was for their life. And so talking it out, I can make my inner world linear to understand like, this is pulling me towards my direction in life. I feel like this is on my path. And for Dana, it's like, doesn't even matter about talking it out. It's giving yourself that time, getting neutral and just feeling like, is she smiling when she's thinking about it? That is the answer. So the best thing that we would recommend like tips for you with the sacral authority and having this defined spleen is taking immediate action on all of the small things. Like, I just feel like I should call this person right now. It just feels right. I feel like I should take this exit. I feel like I should wash my hands right now. Just do it instead of saying like, Oh, I'll call them after I'm done with these dishes, like set the dishes down and just go call that person or answer that email or whatever that ping, that instinct or that gut feeling you'd had that was maybe subtle and soft, instead of putting it off and saying energetically to the universe, I'm ignoring my truth because these dishes are more important, right? You would never say that out loud, but that's energetically what you're doing. Mm. Just take that immediate action. It's going to increase your magnetism. It's going to get you more in the right place at the right time. And then a big decision comes along. It's easier to feel that feeling because you've been doing it with all the small stuff. And it's like, hell yes, I want to do that. Or I don't know. So no, for now, so let's circle back in a month, mm. um, becomes really crystal clear. So that's just a small example. There's eight different authorities so that we have very practical tips and resources for them all. But, um, yeah. That's and beautiful. for, for yeah. generators, it's all about your body, right? Like your body is your truth. So specifically for generators, doing things like joyful movement and things that you're getting into your body and you're really feeling kind of like that union. So things like yoga, things like stretching is so good for you. Anything that really gets you into your body and engages your senses. So we have a lot of rituals that we like to offer generators specifically about reconnecting to their sense of pleasure and joy and sensuality, and not necessarily in a sexual way, but also that but just really connecting through your senses, like that is the juicy realm that when generators are connected to that, they can really feel their body. A lot of us have been taught to disconnect from that and are completely disconnected from our all sensuality and all joy. So a lot of our rituals 
are around that as well. That's why I love that you do what you do. Like you are in such alignment with your chart and we have lots of other specifics we haven't even talked about in your chart. Like you literally have the, this like spiritual quality that's helping people love their life more through honoring their body more. And this is a quality that you're here to cultivate, Laura, in your life and to teach and to really guide people with. So it's just so beautiful. Like as we're talking to you, we mm -hmm. get to see this blueprint of your energy. Mm -hmm. um, and so much of the things you say, like you're just so deeply in tune and, and integrated, like with these things that your soul really came here to be. So that's always a joy for us when we get to meet someone like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Does all well, that tra track for you? Absolutely. I'm like tearing up because yeah, it's, it's something that not everybody can relate to, but it brings me like my entire heart feels just, it just continues to grow when I see people experiencing self-love through movement, through empowerment, mm -hmm. through embodiment, because, you know, embodied is really taking this idea of joy and bringing it into your body, which houses your spirit, which houses your um, all of it, your ambitions, your visions. And so, as you said, so many people are disconnected from it and then only kind of tune in when it's failing them in some way or, or disappointing right. them or hurting them and right. versus honoring this um, amazing, amazing vehicle that we are blessed with that um, doesn't just move us, but absolutely invites us to come home every day, you know, to, yes. to yeah. when we've been pulled in a lot of directions. Mm -hmm. It is like that feeling of coming home and feeling, oh, I'm safe, I'm secure. And I love myself, you know? And mm -hmm. I yeah. think that it's weird because women in particular, but I'm sure I can't speak, I'm not a man, but I'm, you know, the women are not taught to love themselves. It almost feels like it's um, arrogant or something. I don't know what it is, but wow, if we could love ourselves more, what, you know, like what power we would have in this world. So that's really what I'm trying yeah. to help people do is, is find that inner love through um, not fighting their body, but really loving their body and, and looking at it as this way to, to feel better in their life. Yeah. Beautiful. And honestly, um, looking at your chart and just seeing that reflected back, you are, you have such strong gifts around, teaching around embracing everyone exactly as they are, however different they are embracing diverseness within others and still bringing them, meeting them where they're at and bringing them closer towards more self-love and, um, and understanding themselves more. And you're incredibly observant. Um, you're more observant than most people, <laughs> anyone in the room. So sharing your, your wisdom, your observations, these, um, things that you're seeing. And you have this very rare gift about bringing out the best in people in whatever it is they're working on. It's like this good luck charm kind of energy of where you're able to help bring out the better side of whatever it is they're working on. So, um, I love what you're doing and it's really beautiful to see it reflected in your chart because it's in such alignment and you have a very logical side too of finding mm -hmm. solutions and problem solving. So, um, it's a very beautiful balance between, uh, like yin and yang and offering the logical side, but also the very embodied felt real, like you're safe here. You can be here and I'm going to meet you and I'm going to help you. And it's not going to feel scary because we're here together. So mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. I do too. I love it. Yeah. I love that so much. So we had one final. Yeah. Yeah. So last we have <laughs> our reflectors. So they always almost go last. I kind of feel bad for them because they are the 1% of the population. Wow. So reflectors are like a unicorn for us in human design world. Can right? you give They're an example so of a reflector that everybody would know? Yeah. So Sandra Bullock is actually a reflector. Oh. Um, and so the thing about reflectors is that they are the super rare energy type where all of the centers in their body are completely open. So they really take in the world around them and kind of become temporarily, they reflect, they mirror the energy that they've been around. So reflectors are people that can feel the most cozy and open and accepting and friendly. Like their energy is just um, like a reflection of 
whoever they've been around. So if they've been in a healthy environment, they can really have all of those qualities. But if they've been in an unhealthy environment or around unhealthy people or inauthentic people as well, they can really kind of mirror or become that dis-ease, that friction, that lack of wellness. So for reflectors, there's really no way to kind of pinpoint, like no two reflectors are the same because they're going to be sort of like a reflection of the environment that they've been around. And when you do see a really healthy, thriving, like amazing reflector, you know that they've put themselves in environments around really good people who are authentic and kind. So um, with being a reflector, as I mentioned, you're kind of this open chameleon and you can be everything. You can experience every quality that there is. And you're also designed to be nothing, this open, clear vessel. So for reflectors, it's really about allowing themselves to change and grow and letting life live them and not being attached to the things that they feel, but really letting them cycle through. And obviously this is very different than how we're taught to be. Our society really values consistency and having definitive qualities. And reflectors are like this open vessel that life comes in and fills them up and they temporarily become that. And then they allow that to, to release. And reflectors have this very sacred purpose to be the gauges of our society. We are really designed to look to them to see how are we all doing? If our reflectors are doing well, we know we're doing well. If our reflectors are allowed to be authentic, then we're allowed to be authentic. If our reflectors are experiencing um, connection and really being included in a sense of belonging, then we know that we have that in our communities. So as a reflector, um, the way that you apply your strategy to really help you move through this world is actually by allowing yourself an entire lunar cycle to make any life decisions. So the reason for that is because reflectors are extremely connected to the moon and to the transits, the energetic qualities that the moon shape shifts and experiences and then kind of programs into the reflector each month. So I know that that sounds really woo woo, but if you ever meet a reflector and you tell them this about the moon, instantly it's the first thing that resonates. They're like, yes, like I am the new moon. I am the full moon. And we all are programmed by the moon, right? We're all of us are for women, your menstrual cycle, but for everyone, we experience this connection to the moon, but for reflectors, it's so important. It's a crucial part of their life. And so connecting with that, but also giving themselves slowing down and giving themselves an entire lunar cycle to make a decision. That's really the way that they kind of distance themselves from the pressure to be like everyone else and allow themselves to find clarity in their own version of intuition. So, um, if anyone knows a reflector in your life or you have a reflector child, um, it's so important to really look to them for that wisdom and for that guidance and to know um, if they're not doing well, then that means our society as a whole isn't or our family as a whole isn't. And what can we do to better ourselves and become our most authentic self? so that we can all really thrive and have this harmony. And, you know, that's really something that we're wanting to kind of grow into. And I think we are awakening to is the more we allow ourselves to be diverse, that is when we are our healthiest. That is when we have our most harmony. If we force ourselves to homogenize and be like everyone else, that actually creates disease. That creates discord. That is not what we need. We need every single person being their most authentic self, showing up with their true purpose. And that diversity creates this delicious harmony that is of a higher order, right? That life itself has designed. And so that's where our human design comes from. Like you are designed, you have this intelligent, incredible, beautiful design. And the more that you can allow and embrace that diversity, the more we're going to show up with this collective harmony. Mm, that's beautiful. I love all of that so much. I could talk to you guys for hours. Mm. Um, really, you're both such beautiful examples of transcending the the pressures that are placed upon us, whether it's parental, societal, I, you know, our own internal pressures that we've been conditioned and listening deeply to that inner wisdom that we all have to be able to um, live our lives in, in alignment with what we kind of know about ourselves to some degree, but we might have ignored or might not have liked or whatever it is. But when you actually embrace it, like you said, you, you become, uh, you're just... It's like a billion, you know, it's joyful, it's full, it's all these things um, because you're not having to like live in an, in an authentic way. So thank you for modeling yeah. that and thank you for creating mm. 
an entire uh, profession, I dare say, <laughs> around it. How can people find out more? I'm sure many people that are going to listen are going to be like, I want to sign up and learn all about myself from them. <laughs> yeah. So um, you can learn about any of our offerings on daylunalife.com um, and decide how you want to dive into this information. That might be through our podcast, which is the Day Luna Human Design Podcast. If you're just wanting to um, start exploring for yourself um, and seeing what resonates for you, that's a great place to start. We also have our ritual kits, like Dana mentioned before, which is a physical way to connect with your chart. And then we have our video courses. Um, so learning more about your type, your daily practices, your many different gifts. And if you're wanting to learn the whole human design system to use this with your own clients, um, whether you're doing human design readings or not, it's just so powerful. Um, we also have a human design training that teaches you everything you need to know. So there's many different things and we hope that we got to spark some curiosity of, um, self awareness and self exploration and really empower you to be more radically authentic and figure out what that even looks like for yourself. Yes, you definitely did. And I'm sure that, um, you will, the phone is going to be off the hook, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love it. Well, thank you both so much. It was just such a pleasure. So everybody make sure you check out these lovely, this lovely duo Shana and Dana. And can you spell the name of your um, company? Yeah. So it's Day Luna, all one word. It's D A Y L U N A. And that's also where you can find us on Instagram at Day Luna. Um, so yeah, we Amazing. look forward check to out Day Luna. Well, wonderful again. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, and um, your spark. I can feel it across the screen. So everyone, check them out. And as always, I'm pulling for you.